Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Natus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about beta 2 microglobulin, sputum sampling, we talked about uric acid in the blood, and uric acid in the urine. We talked about acetylcholine trace and anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies. We talked about lactate dehydrogenase and lactic acid. Today, we'll talk about a very important topic in medicine. The sooner you understand this, the easier your life becometh. It's the topic of the renin and dutensin aldosterone system. Oh, by the way, do you know why we call it renin? If it ends in IN, it's probably a protein. Ren because come from the renal, from the kidney. It's the protein of the kidney. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. If you have watched my course on renal physiology, I've told you about the functions of the kidney. The kidney regulates water balance, electrolyte balance, acid-base balance, the arterial blood pressure, it excretes waste products and foreign chemicals and toxins, it secretes gazillion things including dopamine, prostaglandins, bradykinin, EPO, which is erythropoietin, renin and the active form of vitamin d can we consider renin as a hormone yes because it's secreted from the kidney to the bloodstream can we consider it as an enzyme yes because it converts angiotensin o gen into angiotensin 1. also the kidney has a metabolic function gluconeogenesis some amino acids and some fatty acids can become glucose these are non-carbohydrate sources i.e new sources when you make glucose from new sources it's called gluconeogenesis if you want to learn about metabolism check out my biochemistry playlist do you recall the constituents of your blood yeah plasma and cells the plasma is made of water and proteins the proteins are albumin and globulin the globulins could be alpha globulins beta globulins or gamma globulins the alpha globulins are divided into alpha 1 and alpha 2 alpha 2 is the angiotensinogen who makes all the globulins the liver so here is the lovely liver making the alpha 2 globulin known as angiotensinogen why would you call it angiotensin ogen? Ogen because it will generate angiotensin. And why do you call it angiotensin? Angio means vessel. Tense means to constrict. Oh, I'm gonna constrict vessels. And I am protein in nature. I-N means protein that will constrict vessels, i.e. I tend to raise blood pressure. Who converted angiotensin ogen into angiotensin 1? Renin. Where did that come from? From the kidney. Can you be more specific? From the cells that are near the glomerulus, i.e. juxtaglomerular cells, which are part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Here is angiotensin 1. By angiotensin converting enzyme, mostly in the lung, will convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2, which has two main functions. Function number one, it's in the name. It's gonna constrict vessels and raise my blood pressure. Function number two, it's gonna knock on the door of the zona glomerulosa of the cortex of your adrenal gland and tell that cortex to secrete aldosterone. What does aldosterone do? Four things. It reabsorbs salt, it reabsorbs water, it excretes potassium, it excretes hydrogen. Why do you want to reabsorb salt and water? Because the whole purpose of renin is to raise your blood pressure. It does this through angiotensin 2, which constricts vessels. It also does this through aldosterone, which reabsorbs salt and water. Because remember that your arterial blood pressure equals cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. When you constrict vessels, you decrease the radius and increase the resistance. When you increase the total peripheral resistance, you tend to increase blood pressure. Moreover, when you reabsorb salt and water, you increase the extracellular fluid volume, which increases the venous return. If there is more input to the heart, there will be more output from the heart, i.e. cardiac output, which will also tend to increase blood pressure. So, renin has one purpose in life, to raise your blood pressure. Therefore, what's the main stimulus for renin release? Low blood pressure. Hypotension will stimulate renin release. How did the kidney know that the blood pressure is low? Because when the blood pressure is low, there will be less blood pressure in the renal artery, which means less blood perfusion to the kidney. The kidney has some sensors for pressure, i.e. baroreceptors, and will sense the drop in the blood pressure 
and will start secreting renin to raise the blood pressure back to normal. This is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Speaking of aldosterone, where did it come from? From the zona glomerulosa of the cortex of your adrenal gland. Why do you call it sterone? Because it has a steroid compound. Why do you call it aldo? Because it has an aldehyde group. It's called chemistry. Aldosterone has four functions in life. It reabsorbs salt and water. It excretes potassium and hydrogen. Since sodium, potassium, these are minerals, we call aldosterone a mineralocorticoid. Mineralo, minerals. Corticoid, it comes from the cortex of your adrenal gland. Now, let's talk about regulation of renin release. Who releases renin? The juxtaglomerular cells. Factors that will boost renin release include any cause of volume depletion. Maybe I have hemorrhage, maybe it's a third degree burn, or maybe there is decreased effective arterial blood volume because all of the fluid is in my ankles, in the edema, outside the vessels. The end result is less blood inside the lovely vessel known as renal artery. If there is less blood in the renal artery, there will be less kidney perfusion and the kidney will start to shout. Shout what? Profanities? No, it will shout renin because renin will try to raise the blood pressure which will improve kidney perfusion. The kidney is acting in her own self-interest. And since renin will trigger aldosterone down the road which will stimulate salt reabsorption and retention, anything that has low salt or anything that decreases my serum sodium will trigger renin release. And since aldosterone's job is to get rid of potassium, if I have hyperkalemia, renin will be so mad, which means it will have to work harder. If I stand up, gravity pulls blood to my ankles, away from my heart, which decreases venous return, which decreases cardiac output. Less input to the heart equals less output to the heart. Remember that blood pressure equals what? Cardiac output times TPR. If cardiac output is low, blood pressure is low. If blood pressure is low, renal perfusion is low. If renal perfusion is low, the kidney will start to shout renin. And there is some circadian rhythm or diurnal variation. Renin is higher early in the morning and then it gets lower as the day progresses. As for factors that decrease renin release, go with the opposite. Instead of volume depletion, go with volume overload. Instead of hypotension, go with hypertension. Instead of too little renal artery perfusion, go with too much. Instead of hyperkalemia, go with hypokalemia. Instead of upright, supine. Instead of early morning, later in the day. If I have a tumor in the adrenal cortex that secretes too much aldosterone, aldosterone will be high. As a negative feedback, you do not need renin anymore, so renin will drop. Conversely, if it's a secondary hyperaldosteronism, maybe I have hypotension, maybe I have a tumor in the kidney secreting renin, renin will go up first and renin will raise aldosterone down the road. So in primary hyperaldosteronism, aldo is high, renin is low but in secondary, both are high. If I have a tumor in the adrenal cortex that secretes too much aldosterone, this is called Kahn syndrome or primary hyperaldosteronism. But if I have a problem in the kidney, let's say a kidney tumor, dishing out too much renin, this renin will increase angiotensin 1, which will increase angiotensin 2, which will increase aldosterone, but this did not start in the adrenal cortex. It started somewhere else. So we call this secondary hyperaldosteronism. After aldosterone has performed its function, who do you think metabolizes it? The liver will break it down into glucuronic acid and others and then send it to the kidney to excrete it and part of it will end up in the stool. That's why if I have liver disease or kidney disease, I can end up with hyperaldosteronism. Would you call this primary or secondary? Secondary hyperaldosteronism since the problem did not originate from your adrenal cortex. To learn more about kidney function, download my renal physiology course. It will teach you about GFR, renal plasma flow, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, etc. Download it today at medicosisperfixnetis.com. To learn about hypertension that can happen during pregnancy, including chronic hypertension, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, peripartum cardiomyopathy, acute fatty liver of pregnancy, and much more, download my obstetrics and gynecology high yields 
course at metacosisperfectionalist.com. And if you want to know about trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, and the different types of shock, download my surgery high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Metacosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.